Ah. How's it going, guys? Welcome back to the channel of The Buff Nerd. Uh, how's it going? How have you been? Uh, it's been about a month since my most recent video, uh, which was me talking about finally landing a role as a network engineer after, you know, jumping through hoops and getting all of the experience and making all the connections over the course of the last two and a half to three years. This video here is going to be a little bit of an update uh, just to let you guys know what's been going on, um, what I've been doing over the course of the last three weeks, how um, I'm starting to get comfortable in this uh, network engineer role, and you know, just to get you guys updated and get you a little fired up and talk about some of the differences and you know some of the new things that I've been exposed to, some of the tasks that I did have in my old job as an admin, and you know how things have changed when it comes to me becoming uh, a network engineer. First off, who am I? For those of you that may not be familiar, or you know this may be your first or second video that you've seen that I've made, I am the Buff Nerd, also known as Brendan. But anyways, uh, I've been on YouTube for the last two years. Um, I haven't been on consistently. Um, over these last two years, I've only made about 11 videos. But um, I started out on YouTube two years ago talking about uh, my journey breaking into the IT industry and uh, some of the things that I had to do and some of the search that I had to obtain in order to help me get my foot in the door. And, you know, also some of the things I had to do to, you know, stay grounded. I talk about all the different experiences that I've had as far as going from the help desk or actually going from an internship to the help desk or in going from a help desk to a network admin role. And most recently, this video here, we'll be talking about my transition from a network admin to a network engineer. It's going to be a little unusual because, um, I know that you guys are probably gonna expect me to go into extreme detail talking about all the cool stuff that I do now, all the stuff I put my hands on, or you know, all of the different technologies and all of that cool stuff, but it's actually kinda different. And when I say kinda different, I mean it's different compared to some of my previous roles because uh, uh, previously I worked for an enterprise company as a network admin. It was actually my first network admin position. Uh, this is where I went from the help desk to the admin role. Comparing that position as an admin to my position now as an engineer, there are, there are a lot of similarities, but there is also a huge difference. We'll talk about that later. But anyways, so um, that's who I am it's a, in a nutshell. Um, just a guy that started out on the help desk. Actually, I started out as a dude that just got a couple of certs, no college, no experience whatsoever. Uh, got some certs, got my foot in the door with the IT industry, and then worked my way up over two and a half to three years to the level I'm at now as a network engineer. The position that I hold now uh, is a, a contract position with the Department of Defense, which is considered the government sector when it comes to the whole IT industry. Um, there's a private sector, which is all of the enterprise companies, you know, uh, Quicken Loans, Little Caesars, uh, any all of those companies that you could think of, you could think of Apple, you know, Verizon, all of those companies, those are considered the private sector. The government sector would be, you know, jobs specifically tailored towards the military or the, you know, the Air Force or the Army and things of that nature. Companies get contracts in order to provide different services to the DOD. And I went from going to the private sector and, you know, working with a bunch of civilians to the Department of Defense, which is working with a bunch of veterans, a bunch of soldiers that are still in, and you know, things along those lines. That's where I landed my role as a network engineer, which is amazing. But let me talk about some of the differences between uh, some, of my, uh, some of my previous roles and my role here as an engineer. So first we're gonna start talking about uh, my role as an engineer now. So um, as an engineer, some of the stuff that I do, uh, in a nutshell, very on the surface. Some of the things I do now as a network engineer aren't very different, like for instance, monitoring uh, networks for multiple military installations, using uh, monitoring software, uh, like for instance, SolarWinds. Something that I do a little bit different now is instead of troubleshooting layer two uh, and you know layer one issues when it comes to a network, now I'm looking more into uh, layer three, you know, looking at different protocols like OSPF or BGP or ISIS or EIGRP. In my current role, BGP and OSPF are the darlings when it comes to the routing protocol that's used with my particular job. Um, I'll you know, look at those configurations and troubleshoot as needed depending on the calls that are coming in. 
specific events that will come up that will call for uh, customers to request configs. And, you know, as a network engineer, me and my team uh, generate configs and, you know, go line by line to check and see exactly, you know, what it is that they need and all the configurations they need before giving them out. And also, uh, daily, uh, we perform regular network configuration backups um, to, you know, make sure that in the event that something goes wrong or something needs to be fixed, there will always be a backup uh, ready to, you know, be used in order to get things up to speed and to prevent a network from being down for an extended period of time. In a nutshell, my role as a network engineer over the course of the last month, uh, those are some of the core things that I've been doing, paying attention to, watching, and getting familiar with uh, when it comes to my role as a network engineer. One of the things that I wanted to make sure I talked about was uh, the difference between this role as a network engineer versus one of my past roles as a network admin. And that's primarily because my role as a network engineer, you'd think that I'd be in the weeds, you know, I'd be out and about going to different places in network closets, looking at MDFs and IDFs, you know, to make sure everything's up to speed. But actually, that's not the case at all. At least not in my current role. Um, it's more of a, at my desk, uh, doing things remotely, you know, logging in into routers or switches and doing this or that, uh, doing troubleshooting from there, which kind of threw me for a loop. I won't lie. You know, I expected that this network engineer position would be a little bit more hands-on. You know, the crazy thing is there is a lot of growth. There is a lot of growth. There is, you know, a lot of ways to pivot and there's a lot of stuff that I can get my hands on, but we're still very early, you know, well, at least I'm still very early in this position. So of course I haven't experienced none of that yet. So you know, um, I'm just going based off of some of the things that are the core, you know, tasks that need to be done on a day to day basis. I thought that it'd be a little bit more physical, you know, going out and touching things, moving things, but it's uh, not for the most part. But one of my past network admin positions, uh, it was like that. Uh, I was doing the work of a network engineer. If I had to compare both of these roles, um, this is when I was in the private sector. Uh, I was it was my first network admin role. Um, I was grossly underpaid. But at the same time, I appreciated it because it was more than I was making on the help desk. And it was a lot of the experience that I needed in order to, you know, land future roles um, as admins or engineers. You know, uh, in that first admin role that I got, uh, I was doing everything. Um, I was in and out of buildings. I was looking at IDFs. I was uh, upgrading IOSs. I was, you know, traveling with other engineers, watching them do their thing. I got plenty of exposure. I've seen plenty of platforms. I touched a lot of things. It was very overwhelming, as you know, I talked about in my previous video. And it's just, it's a little funny just understanding that, you know, now that I'm an actual engineer, yeah, of course, you know, it's a different company with different important tasks that need to be done and, you know, all of that. Um, it seems like my workload now is, you know, a little bit less or a little bit more tamed than back when I was an admin. Um, when I was an admin, yeah, there were a lot of technologies, there was a lot of exposure, but it was very unorganized sometimes. Uh, I was, I felt like I was drowning in work, you know, because the engineers were so busy and me being a newbie and COVID hitting, you know, there was a lot I had to catch up on, you know, there was a lot of uncertainty as far as how I felt. I also had to get my CCNA while I was in that role. I didn't have to, but I wanted to, you know, and you know, there was a lot of moving pieces when I was an admin there. But, you know, now that I've kind of gotten the hang of things and now I am officially uh, a network engineer, it's just, you know, it's a little funny. And I, I, I hear plenty of people talk about it. They talk about how, you know, depending on where you are, the different tiers as far as, you know, the stuff that people do, it varies. And, you know, some people, uh, uh, some companies actually uh, have tier systems that, you know, do a little bit more than others or tier systems that do a little bit less. Um, the crazy thing about that is my previous role that I just left as a uh, LAN WAN admin, uh, that was actually tier one. Me being transparent with you guys, um, when I went from that first admin role, which is being in the closets and doing everything, to the next admin role down in North Carolina, uh, I went back to tier one essentially. So in my opinion, if I had to say this was a step up or a step to the side, it wasn't. It was a step backwards. I went from being a full-blown admin, touching and all that good stuff, to sitting at a desk and being the first point of contact, taking calls, uh, directing traffic, communicating with different teams, and all of the other stuff that I did when I was on the help desk. And yeah, I, I did a little bit of uh, troubleshooting and a little bit of configuration changes, like uh, you know, when it came to like like 
making sure that a port was on a particular VLAN and printers and, you know, doing things like that. Um, outside of that, I was basically like a, a, a knock analyst where I just kept my eyes on the monitoring software that we were using, you know, and then when things went down, made phone calls and all of that stuff. Uh, so going from that, which is, it, it's considered tier one, like at that particular company, that was considered tier one. And tier two was the guys that were going out, touching things, making configuration changes, you know, doing all of that cool stuff, you know, and I'm like, okay, well, you know, if this is tier one, I want to go to tier two. And, you know, as you guys know, for those of you that watch my content regularly, uh, the position that I have now as a network engineer is considered tier two. And yet this role doesn't require any touching, any configuration, like, like me going out and going into these network closets and, you know, doing any of that. It's all things that can be done while sitting at a desk. And I mean, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. I'm still doing network engineer things, but it was a little bit of a letdown, you know, um, cause I'm one of those people that has to touch something or, you know, I do a better job learning something by touching it, by feeling it, by, you know, being up close and personal, having eyes on it, you know, seeing the green and amber lights on the routers and switch, you know, that's the kind of person that I am, uh, when it comes to learning, you know, I learn the best in that kind of environment. Uh, but you know, once I got this role as a tier two engineer, you know, it was, you know, just a little bit of a letdown, you know, but I noticed that the more, um, the more exposure that I have, you know, the more I work with this team and the deeper I dive into, um, some of these tasks that we do, I realize that there is a lot of room to, you know, get out and do those type of things. And, you know, that's something that I'm going to work towards, but yeah, man, I just wanted to uh, give you guys an update on things and talk to you about, and talk to you about, uh, some of the things that I've experienced since obtaining this job as a network engineer. So in a nutshell, the point of this video was this primarily, it was to give you guys an update on how things are going, how good of a time or bad of a time I'm having as a network engineer. I'm having a great time. And you know, to try and, you know, to ask some of them questions, you know, to see if you guys experience this, you know, going from like one company to another company. Um, does one company have a tier system like, uh, or tier two, tier one admins, tier two admins, tier three admins, and they have spe specific tasks and, you know, things that they have to do on a daily basis. And it's totally different from this company and their different tiers. And also, um, just let you guys know exactly what I mentioned in my, one of my most previous videos, when I'm talking about, um, you know, you having to leave the state or you having to make a big change or take a step back in order to take two steps forward. That's exactly what happened to me in this role. Um, or at least this in my previous role, because like I said, in my first admin role, I was a part of the team that was doing everything that was touching stuff that was configuring stuff to be completely honest. I could have stayed in that role and kept working that role to get to where I wanted to be. As far as becoming an engineer, it may have taken a lot longer, you know, but instead I chose to go a different route. I took a step back, taking another admin role and you know, although it's an admin role it's considered tier one, which could also be considered the help desk. Uh, after taking that step back, getting cozy, you know, doing a lot of networking, you know, getting a lay of the land, you know, preserving my security clearance. Cause that's one of the reasons why I took this different admin role was to preserve my security clearance that I obtained while I was in the military, um, doing all the networking I needed. And then eventually landing a role as a network engineer through nothing but sheer networking. The entire point of this whole video, uh, was me just giving you guys an update on how things are going with me and this new network engineer role. Um, talking about some of the things that I noticed and have experienced while in this role. And, um, you know, just to give you guys uh, some visuals and some transparency when it comes to me going from my previous role and then, you know, completely leaving my home state in order to eventually reach my ultimate goal as a network engineer. I'm still getting a feel for things and, you know, there's, still a lot of moving pieces because on top of this, I'm still working towards obtaining the CCMP. Uh, I bought the Boson uh, labbing, uh, not labbing software. I bought the Boson practice exam questions. And uh, after buying the exam questions, I realized that there's a lot of things that I have to go over again, you know, and refresh on because, you know, I've been studying this for some months now. And some of those topics that I thought may not be as important uh, starting to show up a lot in the practice questions, you know, and I just want to make sure that I'm prepared for anything. So 
more on that later i should be taking that test very soon but anyways um i'll also be um making another video uh in the next maybe week or so you know talking about uh, a couple of certifications that i have um it's going to be a comparison between the network plus and the ccna i got a couple of questions from uh, some of the subscribers asking uh, which one would be a better way to go and you know how was my experience with those particular certifications and you know things along those lines and i plan on breaking down those points and giving you guys a clear picture on exactly which direction you guys should go but until then stay safe stay positive take some business cards and do some networking and get the gains in the gym or in the books.